Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today, we're talking about symbiosis. Symbiosis is a close, long-term association between two different species. And it actually turns out that symbiosis plays a critical role in the survival of many different species, and also through what is now today known as the endosymbiotic theory, symbiosis plays a huge role in how eukaryotic cells developed through the course of evolution from symbiosis of prokaryotic cells. If you are interested in learning more about the endosymbiotic theory, then please see my video on that topic. But now let's talk about symbiosis in particular. First, a close long-term association. What do we mean by that? Well, it means that two different species either closely associate and interact. Sometimes this means that one species even lives on or inside another species, and they do so long-term. This means either throughout the entire lifespan of those species, or perhaps only dur during specific stages of the lifespan, or sometimes it means that they're not always associated with each other, but they're frequently found together for a variety of reasons. And we're going to see examples of those types as we go along. Now, there are three different ways that symbiosis can be categorized, and we're going to talk about each one of those. First, let's start with the type of symbiosis where both species benefit. This is called mutualism. So in mutualism, the two species that are closely interacting or associated, they're both benefiting from that association. For example, if we look at humans and gut bacteria, all humans have bacterial symbionts that live inside their gastrointestinal tract. These bacteria benefit because they gain a place to live inside their human host, and they also gain nutrients from what their human hosts eat. Humans likewise benefit because these gut bacteria help them to digest their food, releasing extra nutrients. Some gut bacteria even produce vitamins that the human hosts can then use. And the gut bacteria can also fill this niche so that pathogenic bacteria are less likely to be able to take hold. Another example of mutualism is the spider crab and algae. Algae will grow on the spider crab host. That means that the algae gain a place to live. The spider crab in turn benefits because this is a type of camouflage. It's able to blend in better with the ocean floor so that it blends into its environment and is therefore less likely to be recognized by potential predators. So those are examples of mutualism where both of the species benefit. Another type of symbiosis is where one species benefits while the other is not affected. That is, the second species in the association is neither helped nor harmed. This is called commensalism. An example of commensalism is remoras, which are a type of fish, and sharks. The remoras will actually attach to sharks and thus gain a way of locomotion, so a way of movement or transport. The sharks, on the other hand, are not affected by the presence of the remoras. Another example of commensalism is clownfish and sea anemones. The clownfish are the ones that benefit here. Like the remoras in the previous example, the clownfish will live in a close association with the sea anemones, meaning they actually can live sort of inside among the tentacles of the sea anemones, and this gives them a place to live and a way to protect themselves from predators that would otherwise be able to attack them. Now let's talk about the third type 
of symbiosis. And this is actually when one organism directly harms the other, meaning that one organism, the one that's doing the harming, benefits in some way, and the association is detrimental to the other species, the one that is harmed. This type of symbiosis is called parasitism. And there are many examples of parasitism that I'm sure you're familiar with. This includes a variety of pathogens, bacterial pathogens, viral pathogens, fungal pathogens that will invade a host and cause disease during their replication and as they steal various nutrients from the host or kill host cells or work in a variety of other ways that harms the host. There are also various types of parasites I'm sure you're familiar with. Things like tapeworms, fleas, ticks that live either on or in a host and are detrimental to that host. So both pathogens and parasites are symbiotic organisms that live in this close association with a host organism, but the host organism in this case is harmed. So these are the three types of symbiosis. I hope that this video has helped you to understand the differences in these three types. And thanks for watching Biology Professor.